CBN promises to build a robust economy. Oil prices slip 3% as Europe widens lockdowns. Plus, Business Express for today will be focusing on power sector as Nigeria puts all efforts to build MSMEs known for sustaining economies globally. Details of this and more on Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. The Central Bank of Nigeria has promised to build a robust economy through aggressive interventions in agriculture and industrial revival. The CBN Governor Godwin M. Mifeli said the five-year policy trust of the Apex Bank, which covers 2019 to 2024, would grow the economy. He added that the policy, which is about establishing a firm and stable microeconomic environment, would pave way for low inflation, financial stability, exchange rate stability, an efficient payment system. The data recently released by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission NEC shows that 1 million meter units have been earmarked for the initial phase of the implementation of the National Mass Metering Program. Ikeja Disco tops the list with approved meter allocation of 106,701 units. Others are Ibadan Electricity Distribution Company with 103,997 units. Abuja Electricity Distribution Company with 101,186 units. Port Electricity Distribution Company got the list of 77,070 units. The allocation of the meters of the respective discos is based on 80% of the million liters for takeoff of the scheme shared equally amongst all the discos, while the 20% is based on the contracted metering gap of each of the discos. The total number of meters contracted based on the metering gap at the commencement of the MAP regulation was 6,324,971 units. Gold edge lower on Monday, weighed down by a stronger dollar, while investors awaited the outcome of Tuesday's hotly contested U.S. presidential election.
prices fell more than 3% on Monday on worries as a sort of coronavirus lockdowns across Europe will weaken fuel demand, while traders braced for turbulence during the U.S. presidential election week. Brent crude for January was at $36,078 a barrel down 1.16 dollars while u.s west texas intermediate fell 1.24 dollars to 34,055 dollars a barrel brent fell as much as 5.8 percent and wti as much as six percent in early trade hitting their lowest levels since may it was a four-day trading week as the federal government declared Thursday, 29 October, as a public holiday to commemorate Idil Malud last week. A total turnover of 1.909 billion shares worth 26,610 billion naira in 23,578 deals were traded last week by investors on the floor of the exchange. Here is Boste Rebel with details. It was a four-day trading week as the federal government of Nigeria declared Thursday, 29 October, a public holiday to commemorate Idel Maloud. The NSC All Share Index on market capitalization appreciated by 6.39% to close the week at 30,530.69 and 15.9 trillion naira. Meanwhile, a total turnover of 1.9 billion shares worth 23.6 billion naira in 23,578 deals we are traded by investors on the floor of the exchange. All other indices finished higher, with the exception of NSCSM index, which closed flat. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 1.4 billion shares valued at 15.5 billion naira, traded in 12,546 deals. The consumer goods industry followed with 131.7 million shares worth 2.6 billion naira in 4,112 deals. The third place was was the industrial goods industry with a turnover of 83.5 million shares worth 3.5 billion naira. The top three equities were FBN Holdings, Zenith Bank and Access Bank. They mutually accounted for 576.5 million shares worth 6.7 billion naira in 4,652 deals. A total of 262,849 units of exchange traded products valued at 2.1 billion naira we are traded in 52 deals as well as a total of 7730 units of federal government bonds valued at 9.2 million naira we are traded in 15 deals summary of price changes saw 68 equities appreciated in price during the week six equities depreciated in price while 94 equities remained unchanged boss the able business express Last week, a series of activities around the energy sector in Nigeria dominated public discourse and are actually reshaping how the sector will look like as we begin to wind down the year 2020. From massive metering to adjustment in the cost of electricity and improved power supply, to mention just a few, what is the face of the power sector as Nigeria puts all efforts to build MSMEs known for sustaining economies? globally. I have joining me from our Kano studio, Dr. Abubakar Mahmoudou. He is the Senior Manager Strategy and Compliance, Kano Electricity Distribution Company, Ketco. You are welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me, Benny. Okay, thank you very much. Well, can you paint us a picture of the electricity tariff as it is today? Are we expecting the hike? by next week and if we are which of the categories are we expecting this hike uh well uh the electricity tariff is actually been reviewed and uh, approved uh first september 2020 but there was a backlash by the label uh which uh, government had to address their concerns and they had to suspend the electricity tariff for almost uh, a month. Uh, now they are finalized uh, on the adjustment and uh, they have agreed to reduce the, the rate that will be charged on band E by 10% uh, 
the rate for band B will be reduced by 10.5%. Uh, and band C, we have uh, a kind of 31.5% reduction in the rate. Uh, so technically, uh, bands D and E are actually frozen. They will not pay the, the recent tariff that is actually proposed going forward. So the implication of this is that uh, customers, particularly the prepaid customers, are expected to start vending with the new rate immediately as from uh, uh, 12 midnight today. So uh, these are some of the implications. Okay, talking about this tariff, are you in consensus? Are you in agreement with the decision of government as well as labor on this matter? Well, as, as an operator, uh, we are operating under a kind of a regulated environment. Electricity market is actually regulated by uh, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. So uh, they look at what is feasible within the, uh, the, the multi-year tariff order. So the multi-year tariff order is actually a kind of template that calculate all the revenue requirement of the industry that will, uh, what it will cost the operators to deliver electricity to the end users. So if the government is asking you to charge anything less than the cost reflective tariff, uh, certainly the balance will have to come from somewhere, mostly from the government. As we are all aware, government has uh, in, uh, spent over 1.7 trillion naira over time to kind of support the industry. So we are in agreement with the government because uh, if we want to go ahead and charge the cost reflective tariff all at once, tariffs are likely to go over the roofs. And uh, uh, we understand the impact of COVID-19. We're trying to recover from the impact of COVID-19. And these are some of the uh, uh, reasons government has actually put on the table to actually uh, extend their intervention. So the basis for the service B's reflective tariff is actually for government to phase out the intervention over time uh, between now and January 2021. Uh, so basically it is going to be extended by implication with this intervention uh, from the label uh, union. Um, coming from the cost reflective tariff now to the service based reflective tariff, it's a progress to ensuring that we have adequate power supply at an affordable rate. But one challenge that has been, which will also help the discourse to generate a lot of money, is the issue of mass metering. When you meter, I believe you get a lot of revenues as discos, as to the estimated billion where some other persons don't get to pay. With this metering intervention, does it solve up to half of your problem as it is being perceived? And if it is doing so or not, can you give us details of the mapping program, how it is ongoing? Okay, uh, the mass metering program is actually uh, another intervention from uh, the federal government. As we are aware, MAPs are actually third party uh, individuals that are actually given license to meter all the electricity customers. Uh, but over time, there are some teething problems uh, in getting the MAPs to, 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 to take off. So from the issue of uh, import duties and what have you, so many challenges, the pandemic, and uh, government felt it is uh, really uh, pertinent they step in to intervene. And they have uh, uh, agreed to spend, uh, uh, to, to deploy about a million meters uh, between now and uh, next year uh, in the phase zero. And uh, at the end of the implementation of the phase zero, then the metering gap will be assessed and uh, determined uh, where the government will have to intervene again uh, for the second, uh, that's the phase one. So it is very important we note that government is not giving this for free. 
Uh, it is going to be paid for through the tariffs, but government is giving a sort of a, a soft loan to the operators so that they can fast track the rollout of metering and bridge the, the metering gap. Uh, but another important thing that we need to know and government needs to uh, actually step in is the issue of uh, willingness to accept meters. It is appalling to know that uh, there are a lot of customers that will outrightly come out to reject these meters. We've had the experience when we deployed about 100,000 meters free of charge in our franchise area. You know, we have to uh, go extra mile to engage the communities, community leaders, and uh, even the government, the government of the tri-state that we are operating. So it is pertinent to, to, to look at that angle. And uh, another thing that I want to, to say here is uh, on the issue of the estimated billing. Uh, there is a lot of resentment on the issue of um, uh, estimated billing. Uh, customers are feeling uh, uh, they have been cheated. There is no fair measure of the energy they consume. Uh, but we need to know that there is uh, a kind of methodology of estimating customers. There is an approved, as I said earlier, it is a regulated industry, and there is an approved estimated uh, methodology that is uh, approved by the NAC. So it is almost a fair measure of what the customers are consuming. There may be some uh, discrepancies here and there, but uh, is almost a fair uh, estimate. But with this rollout, I can guarantee you, uh, if government uh, uh, do the needful in terms of engaging the communities and uh, customers, as well as rolling out enabling laws that will actually uh, enforce the implementation of the uh, prepaid meter rollout, I think it will go a long way in kind of uh, bringing sanity to the industry. Okay, you, you raised two important issues here, talking about uh, the, the rollout. These meters are said to be free, but from what you are saying, they are not actually free. They will be paid over a period of time. I understand if you're going to get this meter, you pay as much as 50,000 naira. Now that it's been rolled out now, how long will it take for one to get this meter? This is important because you talked about people rejecting some of these meters. They are rejecting the meters because they feel they are going to pay more, and there are some that have the perception that some of these meters actually run faster than others and, and all of this. So what are you as discourse doing to enlighten the, the customers out there to ensure that this is actually not true? Actually, you know, these concerns are actually, uh, you know, they are the main concern of the customers. But what we need to know is that there is a body a, a, a government body, that's the NEMSA, that is charged with the responsibility of actually calibrating these meters to ensure that they are a fair measure of uh, electricity per kilowatt hour. So uh, an operator in the industry cannot just import meters and just go ahead and install uh, in the customer premises. It has to go through the uh, NAMSA certification where they will calibrate it and ensure that it is a fair measure of electricity. And uh, like I said, these meters will be distributed free of charge like the government says, but uh, we need to know that it is an investment that is coming from somewhere and it will have to be paid for. There are two ways of financing capital investment in the industry. It is either done directly by the customers by way of paying directly for the meters or it will be charged through the tariffs. Uh, you know, if you look at the component of the tariff calculation, there is capex provision. Part of the capex provision, that's where you slot in the cost of the meter and it will be charged gra gradually over time. We have the rollout of these meters and uh, news from last week showed that there is improved power supply, much more megawatts. As this goes, what, what are you doing to ensure that it translates to the end users having much more hours of this supply? For information sake, I think I'll say this. Uh, these schools are just uh, a kind of like a conduit, uh, you know, 
uh, a disco don't have any capacity to store electricity that is well to their franchise area once electricity is delivered to their distribution network they have nothing they virtually nothing they could do but to deliver those uh, energies to the end users uh, but uh, it is important equally we know that the improvement is quite true we have uh, actually recorded another peak in our generation uh, which is uh, 5,520 megawatts last week. Uh, but this is a kind of a, a normal occurrence. It is a one-off um, improvement. What we normally waver uh, around is around uh, 4,000, average of 4,000 megawatts. Uh, and uh, I think with 4,000 megawatts, the, our grid is another major constraint why energies that are generated are not uh, kind of um, uh, transmittable. Uh, and this is what Mr. President means when he said his target is to achieve 7,000 distributable energy by, by 2020. Uh, because we are having uh, a major challenge with our transmission network. We have serious uh, transmission constraint. What we can wheel or our transmission uh, network can wheel comfortably is around 4,000, 4,500. Anything more than that could lead to a system collapse as we normally experience from time to time. Abu Bakr Mahmoud, from what you say now, the outlook for the rest of year and perhaps the first quarter of next year will be a very good one. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us and giving us hope that we're going to have better hours of electricity supply. And I promise you, Nigerians will keep paying their bills. Well, moving on, stocks were off to a slow start this monday opening the month of november in red the old share fell by 0.17 percent to end the session at 30,479.39 basis points market capitalization ended the day at 15.931 trillion naira 376 million shares worth 3.8 billion naira swapped hands in 6,050 deals. Fidelity Bank, Zenit Bank, and Dangote Sugar were the dominant stocks during the session. Moving on, stocks in Asia Pacific rose in Monday trade with data released over the weekend showing China's manufacturing activity grew at a slightly slower rate in October. Bosiriable reports. The British government announced over the weekend a national lockdown for England, making it the latest country to return to a nationwide shutdown, which begins on Thursday, to try to stem the rapid rise in cases and hospitalizations due to the coronavirus pandemic. In early trading of 2nd November, European stocks advanced on Monday as promising manufacturing data out of the Eurozone and China boosted sentiment. DAX rose 1.56%, FTSE 0.5%. 74% and CAC 40 also advanced 1.3%. In overnight trading in Asia Pacific, stocks mostly rose as a private survey showed China's manufacturing activity grew for the sixth straight month in October. Stocks in Asia Pacific rose on Monday as data showed China's manufacturing activities grew. Shanghai Composite marginally higher at 3,225.12. Hansen Index advanced 1.46% as of its final hour of trading and K also topped to 1.39% to close at 23,295.48. Market focus is also attuned to U.S. election uncertainty and the latest coronavirus development. U.S. stock futures jumped Monday morning despite rising concerns over coronavirus pandemic's effects on the global economy. Futures on Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.59%. The move pointed to an opening gain of more than 400 points. S&P 500 futures Futures rose 1.48% and Nasdaq 100 futures also gained 1.31%. This positive trend continued in Africa with Nairobi's All Share, Namibia's Overall Index, and South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 posting gains. Ghana's GSE Composite was marginal, while Tunisia's Tunidex depreciated. Boss
At this point, we call it a wrap on this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter, and the handle is NTA News Now. Don't forget to use the hashtag, it's BizX. Business Express returns Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. I am Benny Adams saying, stay safe.